How's it feel? Feels good. Feels like we were supposed to do this. So. Well, they were they were bare to deal with, weren't they? Yeah, like I said, you know, we knew what they were going into this game. They're a very good team, very well coached. They run really good sets, and um, you know, at the end of the day, we were able to win with um, our skill and our athleticism. But they were a very good team. Number four for them, a little guard. She was. Uh, you, you were on her a good bit. Uh, she was a gamer, huh? Yeah, um, she's very fast. You know, they run everything through her, so she constantly has the ball. So that can be very tiring to constantly guard actions with the ball. Um, but, you know, once we got settled in and once we kind of figured out um, what reads they were making, it was a lot easier for us to guard it. And ultimately, you know, our length and our depth um, helped us in that situation. What was halftime like? Um, you know, halftime, it was it was good for us. Um, we talked as a team. It was it was a lot of conversation among players, um, and we just what we were seeing out there, what reads we wanted to make in the second half, and we came out and we did it. We all wear the was it a cognizant effort to go after the fouls? Because they, yes. they, they had a load of fouls at halftime. Yeah, already. yeah, no, they we knew that they were in foul trouble. We knew that their key players had fouls, um, and so a lot of the stat strategy in the second half was um, to go at certain players and um, see if we could draw fouls. And if they weren't going to foul, we were going to get good looks. So, um, yes, it did. All right, good luck. And we'll see you next next weekend. Thank you. It was the. Uh, it was obvious at halftime. Y'all knew they were in foul trouble and went right at them. Huh? Yeah, that was something that coach emphasized. Um, we had it was three players that had two fouls and still was able to play the whole second half. And she said that's unacceptable and we need to attack and take advantage of every position that we have. I was watching Coach Starkey on the sideline. He was pretty. He, yeah. was, he was red faced most of that first half. Yeah. Um, we work hard in practice, and when he don't see us doing what we need to do to to win, then he's gonna be frustrated. <laughs> And you saw it down at half. What was the mindset going to second half? Um, that we needed to dominate defensively, get on the boards. They were dominating the boards 25 to 18. We were down on the boards, and that's just uncharacteristic for LSU. Uh, what will be some adjustments for the next game based off your opponent? Um, we'll have to see who our opponent is. Talk a little bit about the crowd, of course. We've seen this crowd on special nights before, but this one was kind of different. Yeah. It felt like every time they touched the ball, it was incredibly loud. How much did that move to these guys? How important was that for you guys tonight? We worked so hard throughout the season to get these games at home, so that's that's a big thing for us. And just to see how the community and the fans come out is, and how passionate they are, how they follow us, how they support us is great. And talk a little bit about the fouls y'all drew to. It felt like almost every time you guys stepped up, you were drawing a foul and getting to the free throw line. shot 37 free throws. Tonight. Yeah. How important was that for you guys as a whole team to be able to get to the line and create chances that way even if the shots weren't going down? Trying to make them guard us. That was the biggest thing. I feel like we settled a lot in the second quarter, and we should have attacked them because a lot of their players had two fouls, and they were still able to get in the game and play in the game, and they were leading us. So we knew that we had to attack and try to get them in foul trouble. What was the conversation like in halftime uh, before going into the third quarter? Um, we just talked amongst one another and we just told each other we have to rebound. That's one. We have to defend. We have to get in pass lanes. We have to talk and we have to switch if we need to. So it was really big on, on communicating with one another and just having leaders in the locker room. And how much of the focus was on the defensive intensity? Y'all came out and got four quick steals in the first few minutes. Yeah, um, we knew that we were down, so we had to get in the pass lanes. We had to defend. We had to do as much as we could to, to get the lead back. And seeing Falaja lead that, that hey, for the defensive side, giving a couple blocks and still and being submissive <laughs> offense as well. What does she do for the defensive side of the ball? She does a lot. Um, Flage brings so much to the game, and she's very energetic, and I feel like we feed off one another energy. So when Flage's going, then you get Michaela going, then I'm going, then Angel's going, then Haley's and Poa, and it just keep keep going. You talk about energy. I mean, How you feel? I feel great. Uh, it's my first time in our Swiss 16. I mean, it was an amazing game. We pick it up in the second half. But I'm just glad we got the win. Scary at halftime because they, I mean, they came, but I, it was obvious y'all, y'all saw the. The foul trouble they were in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We picked, we kept our head up. So I mean, we knew, we know what we're capable of. We knew what what we can do in the course. So it was, it was not scary for us. We we knew what we have to do to be able to get back. Well, talk about them. I mean, obviously they're they're a very good team and they gave you all their best efforts. What, what, what made them so formidable for most of the game? Um, they are a well coached team. They coachable. They discipline. They execute their plays to the end until the shot clock go off. So you're gonna encounter teams like that continuing on when we move on to to the uh, next round. So, how 
have Tom, obviously, there's uh, Coach Mulkey, Coach Starkey, but does any player step up and say, let's get it going? Like, who's, who's the most vocal one at halftime? Of course, Faje and Angel, they step up and say, like, even though we down, we still we need to keep our heads up. The game is not over. We still got 20 minutes left on the on the clock. Let's give our all on the floor, cause you know, like, like we put, was playing hard the whole time. Like we just needed to keep it up, keep it up more, push it up more. Man, the crowd is like one of the main characters like here. Like they push, like they keep us going. They always encouraging us to do better. Like they always like being there for us. Like. Thanks to the fans, cause they without them this wouldn't be possible. All right, we'll see you next weekend. Thank you. Do you see out there when y'all really got it going? Um, everybody was on at the same time, and that's I feel like that's a scary LSU team. Everybody's defending, everybody's rebounding, everybody's running in transition. Um, so just when everybody's on, it's a scary sight. What's it like to be in the middle of that hurricane? I was excited. I was pumped up. You know, like I said yesterday or the day before, um, LSU, they give us energy. So when they leak into that energy, it makes us want to go harder and harder for them as we play. Did anybody in particular spark it or I mean, Flage or anybody? Just kind of a whole, whole team effort kind of deal. Right. I would say Flage, she definitely, she was a leader from the beginning of the game. And then her energy leaked into me and then mine and Denise and then Angel and then everybody. And everybody wants to play for each other because nobody wants to lose and go home. So everybody playing for each other and being excited and playing with energy is what got us on top today. Well, he talked about the crowd, but uh, obviously you all knew at that time they were in some serious foul trouble. It was a cognizant effort to get it inside and get to the foul line. Right, I think that's kind of our game plan regardless, just getting it inside and attacking the rim because we're very versatile and we can do that. So, And then it helped that they were in foul trouble and we could attack their weaknesses. Let's talk about, I guess, Poe and Haley just chasing their point guard around just this Screen after screen after screen, how hard it was. Right. Um, kudos to them because I know it wasn't easy. Um, number four was very, she was very good on the other side, and I think we did a pretty good job of containing her, and they did their job tonight. Was that one of the, I guess, tougher teams you played because they really never got out of their offense. They right. kind of stuck. They just they kept running their stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we knew going into it that they were a very disciplined team, and they were going to run their sets all the way through um, for the remaining of the shot clock. They weren't going to rush shots just because the shot clock was going down. So I think we, in the first half, we weren't as disciplined in that, but in the second half, we fixed it and we became disciplined and we stayed down and we defended and we helped each other and that's what ended up getting us through. I don't know who sent these. <laughs> well, what's uh, what's your take? What's your synopsis of the game? Whew. A win is a win. Um, being able to play Middle Tennessee was a great team. Um, being able to see how many concepts and different plays they were in. Um, number four, she's really, really good. Um, I told her after the game I can see you as a pro and hope to see you at the next level one day. Being able to see a player just being able to come off the dribble, shoot the three, being able to also play down and defend and do it with things at her advantage as a smaller player. And I think she did a great job and kudos to her. But I think we just came out and played as a team second half. Defensively first half, we didn't play how we usually play. And I think we did a great job coming out second half. knew they were in foul trouble coming out of the Yes, we half. did know. I remember <laughs> I pulled something that somebody would pull against me. I remember on that block getting that girl that fifth foul. Somebody would have done that to me, so I, I kind of pulled that out of my bag. I knew they were going to call that foul. <laughs> what flipped your switch offensively in the second half for you personally? I just didn't want to let my team down. My coach, I don't know if you saw her, pull me to the side and say, I need you, Angel, and I didn't want to let her down at that point. Um, I didn't let, let my teammates down. I didn't want this to be my last game. Um, I, we worked hard all year, and I didn't want the reason to be, us to be going home because of me. So just being able to do whatever it takes, um, going up strong, hitting the shots. I couldn't hit my jump shots tonight, but get these ugly games out the way early on. Uh, the crowd, one more year, <laughs> one more year, you and Haley, I mean, I mean is that really? Uh, it's so much fun, I mean, playing in the PMAC, I was just saying, like, I wish we can take all these people and bring them to Albany, I can fly, I wish I could fly everybody to Albany, um, that would be so much fun, I know they're going to come deep um, to Albany, so it's exciting, at one point I couldn't hear anything in the PMAC, it was so loud and it was like, my, my ears just went numb. Went numb. Um, I couldn't hear anything, but being able to play this environment, I know um, whatever decision I make, I'll always love the PMAC. Um, I love being here. This season was amazing, and we wouldn't go as far as we can without them. When Kim said, when Kim said I need you, I need you, what kind of emotions did that start? I gotta get down and be the player of the year. I gotta, I gotta do whatever it takes to win defensively and offensively. Put my head down, duck my head down, and get in the paint and do whatever it takes. Um, 
like like I said, I, I struggle offensively um, these last two games and just trying to get to the free throw line and just finish it around the basket as much as I could. I know you answered this in there probably. Mm -hmm. Halftime, what did that look like? What did the say? <laughs> yeah, Flage yeah, told us to cut the head off the stake, which was number four, and limit her shots. I don't think she got a three up. Um, I made a three maybe to the fourth quarter or end of the third. Um, I think we did a great job doing that. She, like I said, again, she's a great player, um, great season. And just being able to contain a player like that is tough um, just because they throw so many different screens, concepts, and the, bringing the bigs out and having a guard on the perimeter too. So being able to see that early was great for us. You, you, mentioned, you mentioned Flaugé mm -hmm. saying that at halftime. I mean, she came out in the third quarter. Smoke box. Yeah. Still, I believe she had nine mm -hmm. points in that quarter. How much were you guys able to feed off of her energy? Yeah, it was just a team win, team effort. I mean, being able to have her going, everybody was going. Um, defensively is what we turned up. We turned that up in the second half. We knew we could score offensively, but defensively we needed more energy. We needed more deflections, more steals, more blocks. And I think we've done that. I feed off of blocks. I feed off the of steals and getting those type of easy little little chippy passes, lip, chippy possessions. So being able to do that, I think, separated us for this game. Yeah, and I mean, like, in the second half, is that the first time in a while that you really felt like y'all were y'all? I mean, everybody was just flying around. Yes, bro. I just told the team, like, we got to play together. We're going home. You know what I'm saying? We're not leaving Baton Rouge. So I said, bro, we got to play together. And we came out, we played together. We had so many assists. Like, we had transition points. Michaela started doing Michaela things, and he started doing these things. Haley locking up the best player, Angel doing Angel things. Like, everything just went how it was supposed to go. As a number four, what did you think of their number fours? Man, I thought she was a great, a great player. I actually told her after the game, I was like, "Bro, don't, don't have no tears. Like, you left everything on the floor. Like, you are the, you are the catalyst for your team. So, like, I told her, don't have no tears. You repping that four well for sure. That's what I told her. What do you think the first half? What did you see? What was wrong? We just didn't have energy. Like, I feel like everybody felt the shift in energy, especially on the defensive end. Like, second half, we going under screens, going over screens. You know what I'm saying? You know, getting tic tac fouls just because we playing so hard. You know what I'm saying? I think that was the difference in the game, just playing hard. We come out like that on any anybody we play, it's gonna be hard for them. Were there moments in that second half where, is this, that, where you thought the PMAC was maybe as loud as it's ever been? I was like, it's gonna be like an earthquake thing. Like they're gonna be able to pull this up, and it's gonna. I, I couldn't hear it myself. Like think, and I was like, we got the best fans in the world. Like I say it all the time. So did y'all change the way you defended Wheeler at all in the second half? Um. You said what? Changed the way you defended Wheeler at all. Um, not really. I, I feel like she didn't. She scored her first ten points in the first quarter, and I was like, oh no, 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 no more. So I just, you know, kind of just made sure she didn't get the ball. Um, I remember from film what she does, so I kind of just started to shoot the gap. Then I tr then I trailed her. Then I just kind of mixed it up. I realized she had no left hand, so I started cutting her off, going right, and so that was kind of my. Defensive scheme. I was, I was trying to like ice their screens in the first half. Well, Not even ice, ice, but like I feel like I, I, first of all, at coach Bob Starkey, I said in the film room, mm, I'm thinking like a hard head. You know what I'm saying? Do we start hard hedging in the second half? Yeah. So, you know, I'm learning a thing or two, but no, we changed our defensive scheme. We started hard hedging. Niece, you got niece and injuries coming at you at the point guard. It's, it's not much you can do. So, well, I was looking over Starkey in the first half. His face was red a few times. Oh, yeah. He, he, he could turn to a tomato sometimes, you know what I'm saying? We don't follow that scouting report. So, uh, but I think he was part of us overall for how we like adjusted. I think good teams adjust. I think great teams um, adjust and compete. You know what I'm saying? Even when they're down. I didn't even know we were down nine. Well, they said you were pretty animated at halftime. Yes, I'm telling them, bro. Like we gotta cut the head off the snake. Like obviously we know, like she's their catalyst. We gotta cut that down, and no, nothing else is gonna happen. They don't have nothing else but her. You see what I'm saying? Um, so I was like, we take that perspective, we'll be fine. Did you hear Bob telling y'all to attack the rim in the first half? Yeah, I um, I, I love getting downhill. I started attacking. They started fouling. I was like, okay. We slowing the game down, getting our momentum together, so just kind of started following what they're doing. Then uh, our shots started following. Y'all had 30 free throws in the second half. Yeah. So I'd imagine, correct me if I'm wrong, it was a point of emphasis to get to the rim. Yeah, yeah, just attacking them, attacking, attacking, attacking. I think we settled a lot in the first half. That was the difference in the game. We settled, quick shots, shot clock probably at 20 seconds. We just putting it up there. But then we started getting our flow. Michaela started hitting shots, big shots for us. Me start turning up and I think the defense created a lot of offense. I got a couple of blocks. Nice got some blocks. Angels got some blocks. 
It was great intensity. Well, and I asked you that the other day. Typically, it seems like your game gets better as you're depending on how, how you are defensively. Yeah. But uh, it was like there was a time early in the season where y'all pressed in the third period. Yeah. And that was probably y'all's best period of the year. Mm -hmm. um, it's usually defense is the catalyst for y'all. Yeah, especially when we down like that. And I think we had a lot to prove. We had so much to prove. And for me, it was like, I, I just, I told myself in my head, but I'm not going home. I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm going to defend. I'm going to help. I'm going to whatever. Like, I'm not going home. So that was kind of my, that was kind of my thought process coming out of that third quarter. What is it about y'all that makes you